Bar Tales is a game filled with adventure. And the more progression you make, the more challenging everything can become as well. On the highest difficulty, some people might even say impossible, as your enemies start to get passive bonuses, deal a lot more damage, possibly even unmanageable for your crew. So in today's video, I'm gonna share some tips and tricks with you guys, which can make exploring a lot easier. First and foremost, combat tips, but also the crew composition, what your armor layer should look like, your oils to make your crew so much more powerful, pretty much tackle every situation in the game. Let's get right to it. Before we get started, I quickly want to say a huge thanks to Shiro Games for making these videos possible. Made a lot of guides in the past days to cover pretty much everything you need to know about it. If you have questions, leave them in the comments down below, but you can find all my links, including a nice discount for War Tales, in the description down below. A like is very much appreciated, but let's get straight to it. So, um, I have a camp with six companions. I also have one prisoner who is playing the guitar right now. All right, so first off, we have our captain. Van Cleef. After a couple days in the game, you'll be able to assign a captain to your crew, which is very important to get the strategy table, but also to uh, lock the galvanized troops ability, which allows you to generate a lot of valor at the beginning of each round. We're going to talk more about this during combat, but um, if you have a captain, you will also get access to the strategy table. With a strategy table, you can generate even more valor, but it also gives you bonuses for your combat. I think all level 1 skills are pretty good. I like to go with opportunism, so you will deal even more damage with attacks of opportunity, which I do a lot with Van Cleef. But um, support is a pretty nice one as well, if you like to have a more defensive approach, while with flanking you can increase debuffs if you surround enemies, so you can deal even more damage with backstabs and stuff like that. While on level 2 I really like to go with deployments as it gives you 20% extra slots at the start of each battle, so all the available starting areas will be increased, while on level 3 you can also make these pop up closer to each other. Which is very interesting if you start the round with your captain, as this one also comes with a free galvanized troops ability. So basically, if you use this battle cry, you will get one valor point for all the characters that are standing around it. So I think a very nice one to start combat with, basically, engage on your enemies first. Van Cleef looks like a pretty tanky dude. Well, this is one of my highest dealing damage characters. I mean, he can literally hit like a truck, already eliminate one to two enemies with a single turn. So um, I gave him the blacksmith profession to crank up his strength so he can deal more damage. And he also comes with the glory main weapon. So this is a one-handed sword, which deals an X amount of damage based on your strength. And if he's already engaged in combat, this will also give you protection for one round. So it will reduce the damage to you, while he also has the fortifying oil on it, which further reduces the damage taken for three rounds. Then also the strength oil, which increases his strength for also three rounds. And this pretty much happens all the time as we use different abilities in one round. So you will pretty much apply all the oils in one turn. He also has a pretty decent piece of armor. I switched it with something which I already had three armor layers on. If you find some armor with layer slots, you should definitely focus on the reinforced layer of the stack, which you can unlock, I think, in Tiltran County. This will give you both strength and armor, so you become more powerful, but also a little bit tankier. Just one more level and I can probably wear Rhyme Steel, which I can craft instantly, while for my shield, boy oh boy, this is where the build becomes super interesting. So when hit by the engaged opponent, this unit retaliates with an attack of opportunity. So every time when I disengage, I will also deal damage to the enemy, sometimes even twice, as this is also a passive ability, which I have right here, Counterattack. Every time this unit engages in combat, they gain the repost. When they disengage, they gain inspiration for one round as well. And the repost, of course, is an attack of opportunity. So I do that two times, sometimes one-shotting enemies, which is pretty brutal. So I can basically engage, disengage, deal damage, re-engage, get a new Valor point. Very nice combos. So we have our base attack, we have destabilization strike, we have wrath to finish off enemies, and also the taunt. Four ways of dealing damage, as taunt doesn't deal damage itself, but it forces enemies to engage, so that you can disengage and deal damage. So we have fighter on level 2, we've got Valorous duel on level 3, 
3, counterattack on level 5. If you want, we can also talk about level 8, 10, and 12 in the future. While attribute points, I think strength is pretty important as well as constitution. You want to have at least 15 willpower so you can prevent dying during combat and also have a little bit of movement speed, not too much. He also has a pocket knife to deal increased critical damage, while for backpack accessory I still have to find something. My main tank, Lieutenant Harold the Deft, is a destroyer, has a cook profession so he gets more constitution, more HP, so basically becomes a little bit tankier, and also has the same oils, the strength oil to increase your base damage with abilities, the fortifying oil to reduce damage taken, while um, he also has three times the layer of the stack. Also for increased armor, increased strength. The shield is one I got from another arena. I don't think it's essential. I think I would even prefer the Elizarian heater shield instead, while since he's a cook, I also took the salt scoop so he can generate salt during rest and he also has the leather straps as long as this unit is engaged they have the leather straps to increase his guard by another 10 percent for this guy i didn't take much strength i mainly focused on constitution also has at least 15 willpower to survive critical damage he has the destroying specialization at level two so he can wield heavy armor apply the weakening blow which i think is very good against bosses then on level three we have our valorous duel so every time we engage combat we also generate a valor point on level five we have opportunism to gain protection when we have more enemies around us and also gain brutality which i think is the specialization or upgrade from it this guy also has many different ways to engage combat with enemies, to primarily focus on making them take more damage, apply vulnerability or fragility, let's say, which he does with his base attack. Then we also have the weakening blow, so they will deal less damage. Very important against bosses. And with a tactical slam of the shield, we get some more of that. Wrath is to finish off weaker enemies if we want to disengage, while I also like to take first aid, run, and taunt on this character. On pretty much all my characters, I like to go with as many of these skills as possible. I'm gonna be honest, I have a very simple crew composition, which just works very well, as if we move on to my rogues, they are both strategists. So um, what I like to do is give them torches to increase their critical hit. I mean, torches are amazing offhand weapons, especially for the early game. If you don't have access to offense just yet, they will increase your vision. So they're going to be nice in tombs of the ancients, but also critical hit and the torch strike skill, which is a secondary base attack. So you can finish off enemies aside from the wrath to basically generate valor points when finishing off enemies. We're going to talk about that in a second, but um, I have this Faithless Offhand, which I got from an arena in the Drumback County. But um, for oils, we have Swiftness Oil and Sharpening Oil. Sharpening Oil simply adds 10% increased critical strike chance to your character, which is amazing. While Swiftness Oil has a chance to increase your dexterity, also skills up your base damage and critical strike chance damage. So um, that's what you should focus on with your rangers. They have reinforced layer of the falcon, so increased critical hit, increased dexterity, because this is my thief, I like to give her a backpack accessory, which has a chance that stolen items may not be considered as stolen, while the stiletto gives another plus 5% critical strike chance. So as you can see, she has a 57, almost 60% chance to crit. And of course, if you apply those oils, man, you can scale up everything. It's pretty crazy. Just like with most characters, this one also comes with first aid and run, also the wrath to finish off enemies. But um, as specializations, I like to go with the Valorous Victory. So every time when he finishes off an enemy, she will gain one Valor point. Valorous Victory is so nice, especially against animals and rat infestations. As the rats are pretty vulnerable, you will just do one torch strike, take out multiple ones, generate a lot of Valor points, while you can also use the smoke screen to make all your characters disengage and they will also perform an attack of opportunity. Deadly Contract is amazing versus tanks and even bosses as if your rogues or assassins start close to them 
before combat, you will apply this fragility, so they will take a lot more damage. I think it speaks for itself that you want to have a lot of dexterity for your rangers to basically crit everything to their graves. A little bit of extra movement speed so you can engage and disengage a lot easier. I have a second ranger or strategist with the exact same build. This one has a torch, while I recommend you to equip torches to both of them if you go in either a tomb of the ancients or deal with animals as you'll be able to take them out so much faster with that extra base ability generate more valor points but um, this one also has the stiletto for increased critical strike chance and also the devious whirlwind with the same oils which deals aoe damage Vanessa is a thief with dexterity and critical hit, while Halfden right here is a tinker with only critical hit. I think both these professions are fantastic for rangers. You can also give them the alchemist profession, as this one gives you more dexterity. So more base damage, critical strike chance, which is what I basically gave to my archer. It's a hunter. I once again have two hunters with the same build. This one doesn't have the bow, which I want to have on it though, but it's still a pretty good one. So the Mostly bow can be crafted. The swiftest oil to increase your dexterity during combat and the sharpening oil to increase your critical strike chance. Armor layers are also layers of the falcon with more crit, more dex. This one also has a stiletto. Don't ask me where I got all those. I think it was just from resolving combat, doing a lot of contracts, dealing with all those different ganks on the map. The attribute points are very similar to those of my rangers or rogues, as I built a lot of decks on these guys, while they have a little bit less movement, while you also want to have at least 15 willpower. As specialization, I like to go with the Valorous support, because every time when you end turns, near your allies, you will also gain a Valor point. This is especially interesting in the early game when archers are not powerful enough to finish off an enemy with one shot basically, while more towards the end game they can do so. And this is where things become very interesting. If you go with the hunter ability, you can do a knockback, which adds slowdown to especially tanks. I think it's a very nice one to keep them at bay, to just uh, juke them around the map. And if you combine that with precision, every two attacks, you will apply vulnerability and also gain fury. The next attack will be a guaranteed critical hit, and you will also increase the damage of your next attack by 50%. If you combine that with aim, you can take out enemies from a very long range. And this is where things become even more interesting as we look at my Lieutenant Ari. She has the Warbow. This one has a volley of arrows passive. Deal an X amount of damage to the target, and if it's a critical hit, you will attack a second time. So I would suggest you to find a second warbow for another archer, as we can basically first shoot a couple times with a lean to apply vulnerability, so it will be a guaranteed critical hit. Then we take turn with Ari. So if she uses her warbow with a base attack, hit her enemy on a vulnerable target, she will already guarantee critical hit, shoot another time. And if that's another critical hit. I mean, she will apply more vulnerability if she also uses the recoil shot. So you can pretty much manipulate critical hits, always apply vulnerability, shoot two times per archer with one attack, and also use the recoil shot to put them at bay. And if that's not enough, you can always use the Wrath ability to just stand right next to them, punch them in the face to kill them. Very satisfying. But um, I think you get the point. We've got two archers, two assassins, and two tanks with pretty similar abilities. A lot of information, but trust me, this composition is going to work very well in any situation. I like to have a seventh companion with me. Can also be a uh, prisoner. I have my Yeti right here a snow creeper who is currently playing the guitar or bard but um the other six professions we talked about are essentials while the bard is very situational optional same kinds for the woodcutter the scholar and the miner i mean you don't always need these professions while you always want to have a dedicated blacksmith alchemist thief cook angler and tinkerer now, let's leave the village and search for a nice place to show you guys a little bit of combat. We've got free Icy Bay Lighthouse right here with a reward of 200 or Vanquish Gumulf's Squad. Let's go for this one. It's a pretty heavy snowstorm right here, but uh, oh, we already found some wolves. I think this is already a nice one to showcase. So we're going to ambush these dudes. We've got six level nine wolves and one alpha. So I think this will be the 
perfect moment to showcase the power of my archers. With a snowstorm, it's going to be pretty difficult to see everything around me. While it is a lot easier right now to see my spots. So because of my strategic table, I have all these slots very close to each other right now. So what I usually do is just stack all my characters very close to each other. Then just walk right in the middle of it with Van Cleef. Use our galvanized troops to, of course, generate Valor points if we need those. But now we have a full bar. So what we're going to do is start combat with, um, I think, Van Cleef, because we want to explore what's inside this cloud. We're going to place our other tank towards this uh, mist, so um, my squishy targets don't get engaged. So we're going to walk in here. Look at that. We found a wolf, and this one also gets to play first. It also has the fragility applied right here because of my rangers. They will apply that to the closest enemies. I'm going to take Van Cleef, stand a little bit closer, and engage combat with the destabilizing strike first. Look at this. Because it's vertible, it already takes a lot of damage. While right now, we don't even have to use our wrath or basic attack to finish it off. Because we have the repost. So if we just disengage, our character will, bam, just finish him off just like that. I can do this another time. Now we're just going to walk to this wolf. We're going to hit him with our base attack. Unfortunately, it was not a crit, so it didn't get below 50% HP, so we cannot use the Wrath ability, but we can disengage. We will retaliate with an attack, finish it off, and now we can also use the Wrath ability. So we're going to do that. Bam! Two targets down in one single turn. And we can walk to the third one. Apply Taunt with the Weakening, then disengage. And bam, <laughs> almost three characters down. We don't have a visual on the next two wolves. So what I'm going to do is just end my turn with Van Cleef. Start with Harold and walk towards this area because I think there are going to be more wolves right here. Doesn't look like it. But you get the idea. Have the two tanks in the front search for the enemy. And yeah, man, these wolves are just super far away. So let me just resolve combat a little bit faster. So I'm just going to walk to the front with my archer finish this one off with a wrath ability 81 damage already applies a fury so now we have increased damage we can even do um the aim to shoot from very very far away you know what i'm gonna just do the run ability to gain some distance and we have a perfect distance to shoot this target with a little bit of luck we crit automatically shoot a second time so there goes another wolf. Snowstorm is finally going away. But um, let's uh, try another snipe attack. So we uh, have this wolf coming to us. We can uh, look at his movement. So it won't be able to reach uh, Ari right here. So I'm going to use my aim. Do the volley of arrows. We didn't crit this time. Well, we did apply vulnerability. So the next shot will be a guaranteed crit. Which is what we can do with um, Aline. So we're just dashing forward. Using our shoot ability, guaranteed critical shot. With the recoil shot, we can attempt to finish off another one. There we go. So you can tell that these archers are very scary. Before the wolves were even able to reach my squad, they were already gone. I definitely recommend you to save every now and then, even make backups of your saves locally, as you don't want to lose your progress because of a corrupted save file. But um, here we have Gumulf the Pummeler. So a level 8 squad with two henchmen, two raiders, two bombers, very annoying archers, and also a renegade. I think this is where things really become interesting in terms of combat bonuses, buffs for troops, let's say, as right now we also have to deal with a leader. These already come with some greater stats, while they also have a special buff for the entire party. If we take out their leader, this buff will disappear for all the characters. And it is very important to take them out as quick as possible if they have this inspiration which gives them all increased movement speed or more critical hit chance and damage, which occasionally pops up with um, bandits and outlaws. But um, the protection is not much of a big deal and tanks aren't taken down very easily either. So we're not going to focus on this guy. Instead, we want to take out the bombers first because they have flaming arrows. After the archer, this henchman gets to play. So we want to make sure we engage on the bomber so it cannot 
shoot flaming arrows to my entire crew, but at the same time be a little bit tanky. So that is where Van Cleef comes in. We don't have enough movement speed, while with the sprint or run ability, I can reach him just fine. So there we go. I'm gonna use my destabilizing strike. Bam! Hit him very hard. I'm also gonna use the Valiant Assault. So we apply some oils, get protection. Now we can disengage. We'll deal a little bit of damage, but we will hit him once. So now we can apply the Wrath. So we instantly take down this Archer. And now if we end turn with all these buffs, we have increased armor, increased damage. If um, the Hedgeman engages on us, we will simply fight back. So there goes the Pikeman. We're just going to let the Henchman engage on Van Cleef so he can do his thing. While we want to take care of the Bomber as this guy gets to play next. So we can do that with half then or take our chances with Ari as she has almost 50% chance to land a critical hit. You know what? I'm going to play safe and engage with half then. Just go for this guy. There we go. Van Cleef hits once. Wow, look at that. He already lost all his armor because of that critical hit of Van Cleef. While well, he is still very safe right there, he can probably take down this entire crew on his own. While well, uh, now the archer is not going to do anything to us. We also want to be careful for the raider. If we want, we can support Van Cleef a little bit. So I'm just going to bring the archer to this one. Do the aim and shoot the raider back. So we won't be able to reach uh, Van Cleef. I'm going to use my sprint right here to support him. Best friends will also increase the damage done. And now we can shoot. Bam! Almost gone. Oh, sweet. We also applied vulnerability. This henchman will probably engage on Vanessa or Harold. So now I have two turns to play. I'm first going to deal with this raider once again. We don't really want to knock him too half then. So what I'm going to do is just try and crate him to death. Bam! That's one. That's the second one. We applied vulnerability, so the next one will be a guaranteed crit as well. 168 damage. Bam! That's been taken care of. End turn. Get a free Valor point. Don't really have to worry about the rest. We can just engage on the pikemen. Apply vulnerability. Fragility. Just spam all our abilities and end turn. Just gonna support this rogue right here. Throw my uh, smoke screen. So we get a free attack of opportunity. Bam. Do the toxic blade and whoops, finish it off. And as you can see, Harold will only take a little bit of damage. He is so tanky. Now we get to play two times, while after that, these two dudes get to play. So what I'm going to do first is make sure we take care of this guy. Take my chances with critical strikes. Did it happen? We did apply vulnerability, so the next will be a guarantee crit. There we go. Been taken care of and turn. Now we switch to Van Cleef. First use the Wrath ability to finish off this guy. Van Cleef is engaged on the tank once again. Now we just use our archer to finish off the other dudes. Bam! Do the last damage with Van Cleef. Guaranteed crit because of the applying for the ability. And we're just gonna attack, disengage for free opportunities. And bam! We found some plate armor and a fugitive bow, which I don't think are very nice. Well, I also like to take the human remains with me, as here we have cannibalism. You can now devour human corpses. So we can just throw these on the campfire, or you can put them on a spike to generate extra influence. But um, we already have plenty of food right here to do the resting. I think it's very important to assign as many of your companions as possible to the tent if you run out of valor points, as this will allow you to regenerate them very quickly for the next combat let's say while well, you can also throw some schnecks on the campfire which uh, give you increased dexterity more critical strike chance with your characters i think that's a very nice one so we're gonna pay the wages and rest bam this right here is also a pretty interesting target enemy mercenary gangs usually outnumber you and have pretty good gear nice armor heavy hitting weapons so uh, let's resolve combat 
this will raise our wallet level though, but um, we also have a little chance to get some nice treasure while we're at it. So let's just start off by uh, stealing some goodies right here. There we go. So now we have to fight 10 enemies, six versus 10. A very interesting situation, which can give you a lot of rewards if you resolve combat correctly by making the right decisions, or if you mess up, can end with a lot of casualties because um, we have different targets to focus on, the merchants. We wanna make sure these two don't run away while we have a heavily armored pony who can deal a lot of damage. And of course, we have to focus on the main crew who are are basically the scariest of all of them. First, we have the hired killer and the peace bearer we have to deal with. So what I think is a nice thing to do is to simply stand just a little bit further away from them so they cannot engage. So then we can focus on characters who get to play next. And we want to prevent that by killing them before that happens. So this crewmate, who is a tank, we can just knock him back, prevent him from playing one round entirely as well. While we also have the Ravager, who already has the fragility applied to him. So we will be able to take him down pretty quickly. I think it's going to be interesting to position Van Cleef here. So we can basically engage combat with the crewmate. He can also do the galvanized troops while he's standing in the middle of my uh, army right here. So we get a lot of bonus Valor points. Walk to this dude, destabilize him. Also hit with her base attack to give protection. Now we're just gonna end turn. And the first two enemies won't be able to do anything as they are simply too far away from our crew. The Ravager will reach us if we don't take care of him. So what I'm gonna do first is use my volley of arrows, possibly get crits on him so we can take him out very quickly, which didn't happen, unfortunately. So recoil shot it is. Knock him back so he won't be able to reach my crew. Once again, eliminating his first round. So now we end turn. This guy gets to play. Van Cleef will hit him back. Two times an opportunity attack right there. So Ravager is getting closer, but he already has vulnerability applied so we can take him down quicker as well. This hired killer is next, so I'm also going to knock this guy back after applying the shoot. There we go. Voila. Sometimes with some lucky crits, they are gone in one single turn. Now we're just going to end turn. And next up, we have this arrow dude. So that is a problem. They have a pretty long range to move. But um, I think it's going to be nice to just engage on him with one of our assassins as they have a lot of movement speed as well. And then we can prevent them from shooting arrows in the first place. We're also close to uh, the merchant, so we're throwing some axes after ending our turn. But uh, look at that. So next up, we have the merchant right here. This guy will attempt to flee, so he's going to run away from us, while he also has dodge, so he fully dodges my next attack. Interesting enough, we have our torch strike, so what we can do is just run towards him. I always recommend you to stand behind them, so they will basically flee towards this direction. But the first attack we do, the torch strike, will not deal any damage. While the second one is the whirlwind, so bam, now we deal damage to him. This doesn't deal a lot of damage, but um, we can end the turn right here. And he has to do some abilities to escape from me, while now he is basically running straight into the crew or group which I wanted him to be in. Next round, we're just going to disengage with Vanessa, take this spear throw and get rid of the merchant. This guy is called Flower. <laughs> Look at that. But uh, he won't be able to reach anything just yet. So what I'm going to do is take Harold right here and just run towards the pony and crack his shield, make him deal less damage. Just put everything on there. So Pony won't run off. Now for the hired killer, this one can reach Ari and she has a vulnerability applied. So we wanna be careful for this. Then we also have this hired killer right here. So um, we're gonna have to make decisions. I think we're gonna deal with this dude first. I'm gonna do the aim, recoil shot. Knock him back. There we go. Well, this guy already has vulnerability applied, so we will have a guaranteed critical hit. So what we can do is just 
walk towards Harold, do the volley of arrows, and yeah, because we already crit 100% because of the vulnerability, we will instantly kill this target. Bam. If it had much more HP, even armor possibly, we were probably gonna take it down as well. So now the hired killer cannot do anything. Now we're gonna search for the next exclamation mark, which is the crewmate. We don't wanna worry too much about that one. So we can look a little bit in the future. This Ravager also has vulnerability. This Peace Bearer is also gonna be scary. So um, Ravager with vulnerability is gonna be my next target. Here we go. Shoot, guaranteed crit. So we will easily take him down. Now we can use the recoil shot on this dude. So we won't get to me anytime soon. And walk to my group. We also applied vulnerability, by the way. We're gonna support Harold, so he's gonna take even less damage. End our turn. And look at that. Van Cleave is just going ham. Since this guy already got to play his turn, we can basically disengage with Van Cleef and go for Flower or the Merchant. So we're just going to use our Run ability right here. So we can disengage without taking any damage. And I'm just going to deal with this dude. This first ability is not going to deal any damage because he has the dodge. That's fine. Second ability will deal damage. Bam. Disengage. So we can retaliate, finish him off. Then we're going to go for this guy. Taunt. Disengage. So we can deal free damage. Look at that. Oh man, it's so satisfying. And this guy won't be able to reach Van Cleef even because of his slowdown. So uh, I'm just going to let him stand right here. See what happens. This is a problem, though. I mean, we have to deal with this arrow while we don't want the merchant to run away. So we're going to have to take some risks. I'm just going to disengage. I mean, we don't want to let the treasure run away from us, right? Let's first use this spear throw. Hit the merchant. And then stand right here, as then... It will probably run to this direction. Flee to this area. I'm even going to stand right here. Oh well. <laughs> they barely have any armor, so they're pretty easy to take down. Probably going to have to soak some damage right here, which is okay. Pony still gets to play, so we want to make sure we don't disengage from this target. While now, with the Devilous Whirlwind, we can deal some AoE damage. Look at this. Stand right in between these fellas. Devilous Whirlwind. Didn't finish any of those, but that's where the Torch Strike comes in very handy. As right now, stand back a little bit. And with the right positioning, bam. That's already one dude down, one Valor Point. Now we use the Wrath to finish off the other one. And there you have it. Be sure though to not walk into your own poison. But uh, the good thing is, if one of our targets get knocked down even after the willpower we have first aid on basically all our targets so they can all support each other in combat it's very important to purchase all those books at the brotherhood so you will not have this issue since we have plenty of valor points i'm just gonna disengage for a second throw the spear there we go Ooh. weakening blow Tactical Slam. Wrath. So Horsey is gone as well. And now we get to apply vulnerability to this guy. Fragility. And now we get to apply fragility to this dude too. So that's the third turn. And we're almost done already. If you're lucky with the crits, you can even resolve combat in one simple turn. If you want to play it safe, you can just use your both archers to knock back this dude even further. So you don't have to engage combat and break your armor. But um, yeah, since he has a vulnerability applied, I'm just going to see what we can do right here. Doesn't have reduced damage versus arrows. Folly of arrows. Bam. Bam. And bam. 
So with archers, we always have two shots, which I think is amazing with the, the recoil shot. With the latest update, there is a new archer specialization, which allows you to deal even more damage to distant targets. While I think the recoil shot is just so nice to keep enemies at bay, pin them down to reduce their movement speed so you can have three rounds, deal with all the squishy targets, then move all the other ones. After you've even applied vulnerability, you can even apply bleed to them if you critical hit with it it's just so nice but um now we just end the turn get a free valor point and deal with the rest i'm just gonna use my wrath ability to finish off this dude we also have inspiration on uh, van cleef so his movement speed is doubled and look at that we can just charge to this archer <laughs> with one kick kicked him straight to the grave bam wow that was satisfying all right before we have to rest, we can resolve combat once more versus these wolfies. So it's a 6v9, two different fronts. And I think the best way to take care of this is to just stack up right here. Start the turn with your archers or Van Cleef. So I'm just going to stand right in the middle right here. Destabilize this guy. And turn. I hit the next one. Also finished off. <laughs> we just killed three wolves with one single turn. Now we're going to take care of the alpha. And I mean, we have so many different abilities that we can keep spamming them. And this just also takes them down in one turn. So now with Vanessa, we applied vulnerability to these closest targets, so they will take more damage. I'm just gonna stand right behind her with Ari. First use this shot. Apply it to vulnerability. And turn. Then focus on the second polar wolf. No crits, but we can finish him off with the recoil shot. There we go. And now the Toxic Blade to finish it off. Voila! So there you have it, a crew composition which works in pretty much any situation. I also have four horses, Francois, Roach, James and Jesse. See what I did right there? No, but seriously. Um, I think this one is a lot of fun. Very nice composition, which is pretty easy to set up as well. I mean, you start off with a Brute, a Swordsman, a Ranger and a archer so then you already have four of the required team then you just have to recruit two more companions another ranger another archer which you can do very early game if you've watched my ultimate beginner guide but yeah it's a very easy one to gear up as well just craft two times a bow craft two times a nice dagger one sword one mace make two times heavy armor, four times light armor. Half of it is gonna focus on strength and uh, armor layers, while the other one is purely focused on dex and crit. Same counts for the oil, just focus on crit, dex or strength, and of course, decreased damage taken. But yeah, this is what kept me going for over 45 hours right now on the highest difficulty. And um, I definitely recommend you to try out this composition as well. As seventh character, if you don't want to switch professions all the time, you can go for another ranger, which I wouldn't really recommend. Instead, take another Van Cleef, let's say, a tank that can hit like a truck and resolve combat so much faster as, yeah, it just engages, disengages, takes out one enemy after the other, and you saw it. Against the wolves, we can literally deal with three enemies with one turn. I think you can even make a crew with only this character and just resolve combat in one round. I think that's going to be awesome. So um, if we try out an Iron Man run, I definitely want to go with this dude because it's my hands down favorite character with an awesome um, specialization. While the archers with volley of arrow skill and precision are so satisfying as well especially if you land those crits if you take the gamble but um, that is pretty much everything for today ladies and gentlemen a big thanks for watching be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful it helps out the channel big time and yeah if you have more questions or suggestions for future videos leave me in the comments down below always happy to help right now though it's 4am out i want to wish you an awesome day i'll see you in the next one peace